that's really the issue right there. So it's a very different style of play, and that's a good thing to point out there. I'm a little bit disappointed after we talked about Daydream. I, I would have just been so excited if he had the Rusty Blitzcrank skin. I, I guess that he, uh, he probably wasn't playing League of Legends back then. Would have really enjoyed that. Boom Boom Bitch Blitzcrank is also a nice skin right there. But anyway, we should be just about ready to get this started. I will note once again, Nien, the Vayne player, does have Cleanse, not uh, Ignite. And that's very standard on Vayne. With Vayne, it's more about surviving than uh, having extra killing power. She has plenty of killing power on her own. You just want to keep her alive so she can just keep tumbling around, proccing her Silver Bolt. So that's fairly standard as well. But it is a little bit different than what we've seen. And it uh, looks like we're going to get started. Other thing I will mention now that they're buying, Blitzcrank going with the boots and two wards starts. So uh, again, a little bit different than the standard support build, but it makes sense for Blitzcrank. And we'll see if these teams decide to go for a level one engagement. Yeah, speaking of level one engagements, once again, so you always like to analyze what team has the better level one invade just in case. We have a Blitzcrank on MTWNA, so that's always going to have my vote. But how do you feel if they do get a level one engagement? How is Orb going to stack up against that? Uh, this is, I would, I'd agree, MTW has uh, Blitzcrank Shen. That's very strong. Uh, Shen can taunt five people. Blitzcrank, of course, is a wild card, can grab people, and can instantly win the fight. But Orb's level one is not terrible. They do have uh, they do have Swain. His binding is quite good at level one. Darius is not terrible either. He doesn't have a stun, but he can he can hit a lot of people with his uh, with his what is it his Q I think it is his axe mm -hmm. spinning thing. And uh, even Nunu can be pretty scary. It looks like they might actually fight here though. Uh, Nunu snowball can be pretty dangerous at level one because it is such a heavy slow on that snowball. So we'll see. MTW, definitely the advantage, but Orb is not terrible. Orb could be a lot worse than what they have, but uh, they still pretty much, they don't really want to fight this because all it takes is one person to be grabbed and it's first blood, basically. So they have to be very cautious. Mm -hmm. And that Swain still did not level up a skill. He could get that never move in case there's an engagement going down. Both teams kind of just going in through the jungle, and then that's basically it from MTW. And I did not even put a ward down over by Wraith. I think just the threat of them being in the jungle was enough. Cassiopeia, once again, going to lay down poison damage, going to pick up any kills in this one. Another poison shot goes down, not going to pick up the big Wraith. Actually, that's no kills in that engagement right there. So a little bit of a better start for the jungler this game from... Uh, or making sure he got all the rates this time. Meanwhile, Jungle Shen gonna go over here, pick up his wolves, and then go for a blue buff. Blitzcrank with a literal pull on that blue buff will make sure that <laughs> Shen's gonna be taking it down in absolutely no time. So both junglers, fairly standard starts, fairly quick starts. One note here, Shen saving that smite on that blue buff. He's not gonna use it to take it down. He's gonna go immediately to his red buff after this and potentially go for a level three gang, which I said doesn't happen. So I love when teams do this to me. No, and it, <laughs> it looks like Orp High is gonna do the same thing. He also has a smite. It looks like they're both gonna rush over the uh, the other a major buff that they didn't do, whether red or blue on each side, and then it looks like they're going to use the smite, grab that, and then probably look to head top because we see that a lot from the junglers. Just uh, uh, rush to level three with double buff with red and blue, and then rush top and see if you can get a kill. It's, it's usually pretty effective. So uh, Orb High is already heading up that way. Let's uh, let's see if he's able to do this. There's a ward, but it is uh, a ward by Orb. Yeah, so that does mean that Shen is actually a little bit behind in his jungle, just relatively slower compared to Nocturne, has stopped at his rates and is not getting his red buff yet. So he's actually be coming in for a little bit of a later gank right now. Kale and Darius, though, in this top link, like we said, completely exposed to both junglers and those early ganks. Kale can only be expecting something like this as they did it to uh, Orb Gaming last game. So interestingly enough, here comes Nocturne waiting in the wings. I don't exactly know if Kale's seeing him, but now she definitely does. There goes the slow onto Darius. Nocturne's gonna come in here. Fear picked up at level three. Is it gonna be enough? Ooh, what a great fear. Walking Kale away from the tower. Hemorrhage stacks will not be enough to tick down and pick up a kill though. Nocturne did not want to take too many tire shots. And now Shen, the one waiting in the bush. We're gonna see if anything happens here, Sola. Wow, that fear proc could not have been worse for Holy It's Done. He was very lucky to survive that. So yeah, Shen's going to do the same thing. But remember, there's a ward here. They put down a ward there at level 1. So this could be very bad for MTW. Orb High is still in the area, and, and Holy It's Done is quite low. So if they pick this, oh, Cass is actually coming up as well. And here we go. Ooh, there's the Apprehend down on Kale. Ignites and Fear's going off. Another really great Fear who walk Kale into her death. Not sure picked up that kill. Shen has to burn a flash. Get out of there. Hemorrhage stack sticking down. Cassiopeia coming from mid lane. Shen wants to get the taunt. A little extra tower damage going on to Darius there. Nocturne now stuck between a bunch of champions here. Has to burn his flash as well. So he's going to be able to get out of there. We do see uh, Swain coming up from the mid lane as well. Aggression on the bottom lane too. Potentially a kill here. Ball's getting very low. Nine is also extremely low. Lemon Nation now low on top of all this. And no kills going to be net. Back on the top lane though. We do eventually see Yuzuki's going to go down. Tower dive past the tower. Take up a kill on Mandatory Cloud. A little overstayed welcome there on their own side of the tower, I guess, from MTWNA. But nonetheless, aggression from both teams just like last game. 
that apprehend the pull that Darius has is just doing work in these fights. Those grabs are just setting up these plays. The two fear procs that Orb High has gotten have, have just been absolutely perfect. If, he, he couldn't have controlled the enemy champ better if he were clicking for them himself uh, <laughs> in terms of just running back in the exact opposite direction. That was really well played by Orb. It, it looked like that was going to turn into a one for one up there or, or at least a two for one, but they were able to get everyone out safely. They were able to bring Swain up from middle lane and come into that fight later on and ensure that everybody got out safely. Safely. So big advantage for them in the top lane. Those for the first blood and the second kill is definitely going to help put them ahead. And you can see Darius is grabbing the double Doran's blade. That's going to give him a lot of early game power, even going so far as to grab a mana potion. So he has the extra gold for it. So that is going to be a very dangerous lane for Kale right now. And we'll see if Orb is going to be able to use this early 700 gold lead and be able to snowball it out into a bigger lead from there. But they played that early fight that we just saw extremely well. Uh-huh, and on top of this, Nocturne already completing his Madred's Razors for his Wriggles Lantern in the jungle shed. He's going back onto his jungle pad in level 4. Only has boots to his name, has not gone back to buy yet, but does not nearly have the first blood gold that Nocturne got. Look where, look where Nocturne is lurking in bottom lane. Ooh, Deja even gonna walk right past this. No, walks into the Tribush to war, and he's actually gonna come down here and maybe go for a pull. Ooh, Corky getting very aggressive, but there it is, that Nocturne you mentioned. Fear going off. Not the same kind of fear on Kale. I guess Corky's mechanical little copter thing there prevents that from happening. Pull goes down, but does not land on anything. Nocturne's spell shield is gonna save him from a taunt, and then Vayne with a condemned and Nocturne away. No more counter aggression there from MTWNA. Very nice gank there. They did get a lot of damage on balls and not pick up a kill, but still, this Nocturne being super, super aggressive on the map right now. If the fear proc had been as, as uh, lucky as the earlier ones, that would have been a kill. But fortunately for balls, he ran in exactly the direction he wanted, kept running back towards his tower. So that's the that's the little element of RNG luck right there. A little bit of luck. Uh, got got the luck in top lane, didn't quite get it in bottom lane. But it was a nicely set up gank. Uh, fortunately for MTW, they had Shen ganking the lane at the same time and was able to turn it into a three for three, no one dying on either side. Meanwhile, mid lane, we do see Shen kind of lurking around here. Mate might want to go for a gank here on Swain, but decides nothing's going to come of that when it does go away. Both actually Swain a little bit ahead because of that kill in the top lane on Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia level 5, now hitting level 6. Swain is already oh, level Darius 6. Darius so going for top, and he just Ooh. got the kill. Yeah, right there, uh, right there. Uh, Darius just uh, used his apprehend. He got the grab in. He used his, uh, his axe, what's it called, decimate, and then he popped ignite, used his ult. And together it was enough to finish that off. And Yuzuki has now got a commanding lead in top lane. He's going to deny the two full waves of minions on the tower right here. And he is way out in front thanks to that early pressure that we saw earlier in this match. Yeah, actually, we're around for a second. While you were talking about it, you were describing everything going on at the same exact time, despite you not knowing that you, I rewound it. So very, very nice analysis, that one. So it was perfect. Like you said, denying a lot of stuff. But bottom lane, though, we're going to get Blitzcrank and Corky picking up a kill on Vayne right there. Very nice pull from Daydreaming is going to land home on Vayne and pick up a kill for Corky in the bot lane. That aggression from down there, they're constantly pushing him back against the tower. Even though Nocturne was just there, they're already back up against the enemy tower. So that constant flip crank aggression, that constant quirky Gatling gun and damage, just being a little bit too much for Vayne and Noon in the earlier stages of this game right now. This is something we haven't mentioned and we really should. This is what's keeping MTW in the match right now. They are in all kinds of trouble top but their bottom lane is really, really winning quite hard. It's not just the kill that MTW just got, which is great, don't get me wrong, the kill's great, but look at the <laughs> minion kills. It's 62 for Corky to 30 for Vayne, so they are really shutting down this lane in bottom, and that's what MTW needs because they're in so much trouble top. They need to win one of these lanes, and fortunately for them, they are currently winning bot, and they're winning it very hard, so that's a great sign for them. Yeah, there's about a thousand K gold, a uh, thousand K, that makes a lot of sense. A thousand gold <laughs> advantage for Corky in the bot lane over Vayne, or it's in the top lane here. Darius with 26, uh, 26, uh, 100 gold, two Kales, not even 1700 gold. So there is basically a mirror of the top lane and bottom lane. Like you said, bottom lane kind of trying to keep MTWNA from this one, counteracting as much damage as they can be from that top lane. But the one thing is, Vayne is going to be an AD carry that can still snowball out of control and become the hyper carry late game, as long as she's able to stay in the game that long and get a couple items. If Kale gets shut down early by Darius, she's going to have a very, very hard time coming back from that one. She is kind of like an AD carry in the sense that she will be able to scale into late game like she did last game with Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, all the same sorts of items, but she's doing it by herself. She doesn't have a support to keep her protected up there. Here we go, Miz. Nocturne ulting in. There's the flash. A nice fear proc. Oh, it actually runs Mandatory Cloud out of the uh, binding from Swain. 
And is this Ignite going to finish off Nubby Pooh Bear? It is. So that 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 Fear Proc actually running Cassiopeia out of the Swain Binding, which is kind of funny. So it's just going to end up being a one for one right there. Kale also getting chunked really hard in top lane. Yuzuki also quite low. Yuzuki did use his ult. He did not get the kill. So they're going to have to be, play very cautiously up there, both of them. Shen ult also being used in that last fight. So Shen ult going to be on cooldown for three uh, over three minutes with this new, uh, what is it, 193 seconds. It's like a teleport on cooldown there before he can use it again. So. Uh, looks like Yuzuki is going to be strong enough to deny these minions at tower to Holy It's Done. And again, that's what uh, Orb wants to do up here in top lane, as you were talking about a minute ago, Tom. Yeah, interestingly enough, the Shen ultimate, I thought it went all the way through and it could have easily gotten the kill on Sam maybe and saved Cassiopeia, but Ke it didn't. Shen just didn't teleport in at that point. So Well, he didn't up. teleport in because Mandatory Cloud died. Uh, he, yeah. he, uh, Mandatory Cloud died before the teleport completed. Ah, oh, man, I thought Mandatory Cloud was alive for just long. It looked like there's a little bit of a delay, but I guess the kill went off before Shen could teleport in, so a little unfortunate timing there for MTWNA. They did pick up the kill on Swain anyway through the Ignite, so pretty much a one-for-one one in that mid lane. Isn't going to amount to too, too much, although now Orb in position to go for a Dragon. Four members of the team down here are going to go for it. They are directly on top of a ward from MTWNA, so they know exactly what's up with this one, but no reaction really. Only thing is Daydreaming kind of pops up over here to see if maybe he could try to pull it, but they do have basically a wall of champions in the way. So uh, Orb Gaming going to continue pressing any advantage that they had from the early game, picking up a Dragon, four kills to two right now, and a slight gold advantage in this game. A little bit of a mirror from last game where NTWNA had it. Bot lane though, there's a new new ultimate going up. Ball taking a lot of damage. Condemned does not net him against the wall, but Silver Bolt's proc will be enough damage to take out Corky. Daydreaming's in trouble now. Looks like Vayne's going to get a lot of damage. Three Silver Bolt procs, one, two, flash for a third, and that is another kill being picked up in the bottom lane right there. They now spiraling that lane in favor of top, Orb, top, much like rest. Shen gank in top. Oh, oh, there's a flash from Darius going to negate any gank from up there. And like I said, Shen's not too, not as aggressive as Nocturne was last game. His gank's not nearly as powerful or I wouldn't say as scary. They're still pretty scary, but they're not as powerful and as threatening as like a Nocturne that can run in there and kill you, which is being demonstrated by Orb right now. Everything's going right for Orb right now. They got the double kill on bottom, which is exactly what Vayne needed. They needed that desperately because that was the one lane where they're losing. They're doing well elsewhere on the map. Mid's about even, but again, we, we've seen how well they're winning in top. Uh, the reason why Orb got that dragon is they saw Shen was top earlier. Uh, Earlier, Kale had been forced out of lane. Ex Smithy had to go cover top lane. As soon as they saw that, they ran for the dragon. And with uh, Shen all the way up in top lane and his ult on cooldown, there really wasn't anything that MCW could do about that. Right now, we actually have an engagement in mid. Here comes the Nocturne ult as well. Cast ult, though, going to hit on Nubby Pooh Bear. He is going to get the kill. He's going to get taunted by Ex Smithy, but that's not going to be enough. And now, the snowball at work again. Going to pick up that. And then in top lane, Yuzuki's going to finish off a kill. He didn't even need the... Oh, no, he did mm -hmm. use his ult earlier off camera. He did use his ult. So another two kills for Orb. And this game is just really going... Uh, coming up peaches and cream for them right here. They're ahead by 3,000 gold. And uh, they're looking really strong in this match. The only lane they're in trouble is bottom lane. And like you said, Tom, if Vayne is behind in the laning phase, it, it, it's not good. But it's not that big a deal. Because as long as she's just able to farm, even if she loses the tower, even if she loses lane, she'll still be strong later on in the game. She doesn't need to win the lane to still be effective. So Orb's in a really great position. We'll see if they can keep this rolling or if MTW is going to be able to claw their way back and start closing this uh, gold gap. And the thing is, MTWNA keeps falling into the same kind of patterns. You see Darius in the top lane is constantly being aggressive on Kale. Oh, Kale pushes that. Right Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. We actually have Blitzcrank coming in here, getting a lot of damage from Silver Bolts and Vayne. Vayne props the ultimate, though, to try to get a lot down here. Corky, in the meantime, is dealing as much damage as he can on the Nunu. A little bit of a Phosphorus Bomb going off there, but nope. Actually, that was an ultimate. Because it's not going to deal any damage to Nunu, missing a couple targets right there. So they're going to be okay for now. But of course, the Blitzcrank arm is ever threatening, ever impending doom if one of them gets pulled by that one. But top lane, they keep falling into the same kind of things. Top lane and mid lane. That gank at mid lane was very similar to the one we saw last. Nocturne comes in. Cassiopeia gets hit with uh, uh, Never Move from Swain. She tries to ult Swain in tower range. Swain is going to live because of his sustain and all the minions they wind up doving, diving through. And then shows, Shen shows up like a half a second too late to save Cassiopeia. Top lane, Kale tries to extend to try to farm a little bit. Darius is just too far ahead right there and picked up a kill. Actually, bottom lane, speaking of pick up a kill, Balls are going to pick up a kill on the Nunu right there. Lemonation perhaps getting a, a little bit too close to Blitzcrank there. Yeah, and, that, uh, that was a good I, I was watching that. That was just a grab, a grab straight on the Nunu and an immediate Corky just burst and kill. 
This is not done yet. Vayne is trying to fight for a life against these minions here, but they want to push down on this tower. Daydreaming running in. Is he going to knock her up? Exhaust goes down. There comes the pull, but a nice tumble out of the way is going to save Vayne from that one. Fortunately, the tower now is up to just a bunch of free hits, but nope. Balls and Daydreaming just going to fall back. Be content with this one. There's a lot of things going down by MTWA's, uh, MTWNA's red buff over here. Sven actually has to taunt over the wall to get away from this. The aggressive Nocturne and Darius just going to take it away from him like taking candy from a baby at this point. Even Swain is just chilling here with a blue buff as now both red buffs on the map are taken by orbit gaming cassiopeia you want to get out of there there's three members of the enemy team behind you please start running away she's not running away so uh there's an ultimate coming down from nocturne it's gonna land home a flash goes off but the fear is still oh. tethered another broken fear from nocturne apprehend over the wall shen comes in gets a taunt down but the area of effect damage in Swain's ultimate too, too much. Now Swain's in a, uh, Swain's going down with the Decrepify onto Shen. Shen's in trouble, flashes through the tower. A Kale ultimate's gonna save him from the Darius ultimate. Nubby Pooh Bear's now getting very, very low. Is gonna fall down to Kale, but Darius will pick up a kill on Shen there. Still a two for one in favor of Orbit. Yeah, a lot of good action there once again. Nicely done. You could just see that they were setting up for that Nocturne ult. Another nice fear proc for, uh, for Orb there on that and then uh, a great kill out there in blocking the damage from yuzuki's darius ult but it is still going to be a kill going to turn it into a one for one as newbie pe uh, pooh bear ends up falling but again orbit we see how aggressive they're being we saw them go in and just invade and take that red buff away mtw knew that they were there they just couldn't do anything about it they were going to die if they chose to contest that so that's when you know you're in trouble when the enemy team is just rushing in and they're stealing your red they're stealing your blue and you know that they're there and you just can't do anything about it that's always a really bad sign so again orb is has stretched this out now they have a 4,000 gold lead so they continue to stretch this out and that's what you want need, want to do when you get the lead you just want to keep building that advantage just building a little bit more at a time that mid tower is very close to going down as well and that will open up even more of the map for invading for Orb. They can't invade the bottom part of the jungle as much right now because those two junglers are still up in mid and top, or in mid and bottom, excuse me. But uh, they really have free run of the top side of the map. And we saw when they went in and stole that red buff. So uh, Dragon's going to be up pretty soon in another minute or two. And we'll see if we have some kind of uh, decisive dragon fight. And that's really the kind of thing that MTW needs to get. They need to win a fight like that to get back in this one. They're not too far out to, uh, you know, not come back. They can still come back, but they're not in great shape. And we'll see if they're any able to do anything. Here comes the dragon just on kill. Yep, Dragon is going to spawn up. Orbit Gaming has four members down here to take this one. I was following Shen around the map because he decided to forego getting his Aegis of the Legion to get a Oracle's Elixir and try to wind up getting a little bit of an advantage for his team by denying the vision from Orbit Gaming. He's roaming around all of the map right now, making sure he's clearing out as many wards as possible. He is kind of a little awkwardly out of position, walked all the way around by the blue buff and is now placing wards of his own here. He's actually going to recall back to base, potentially go back and buy a couple items. But still, now he's trying to generate some sort of advantage for his team. They are behind, so they're going to be playing it smart. They're going to try to deny as much vision and therefore supplement it with their own like they had last game. So they can constantly keep tabs on where Orbit's going to be and try to react accordingly to this one. Shen's going to have to be playing very, very good defense. Kale did take, uh, did not take down the tower in top lane, but did get a good push going down. So she has a little bit more farm under her belt. So actually be able enough to pick up that BF sword and start doing a little bit more damage. But still, they're really, really susceptible to this Darius in top lane and extremely susceptible to that Nocturne ultimate, where I think every time but one it's gone off, he's wound up netting a kill or an assist from it. Yeah, Darius actually hitting the bottom lane. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything here. Maybe. I, I don't think the range is that great on Apprehend, though. So, yeah, it looks like that's not going to turn into anything. The one thing about that, I mean, it's great that Shen's got the Oracle. Don't get me wrong. It, it's great if he can clear wards. The only thing about that is Shen was not even remotely close to Dragon. Oh, here we go. Another gank oh. on mid. We'll get back to that. <laughs> there goes the ultimate. Straight down the middle again. W Pooh Bear. There he goes. Getting the, uh, the never move off right there. Cassiopeia trying to get the ultimate in tower range. Nothing's going to happen. I think we've seen this three or four times already Sala. this is the textbook play by orb gaming at this point in time yeah and orb is pushing with three on bottom lane as well they really want to get this tower they're gonna they're gonna take middle tower and bottom tower right here and they may be able to pick off some kills but it looks like balls is gonna get out of there so they're gonna take two towers out of this as kale takes top tower but it's still gonna be two towers for one in favor of orbit gaming Mm -hmm. and Orbit now pushing their advantages, snowballing ahead to about a 5,500 gold lead. Quite the opposite flip-flop from what we saw last game, but if last game dictates anything, Sulla, or Gaming still has a chance to mess up a little bit, and MTWNA will be able to capitalize, but right now, they're looking very strong, continuing this three-man push on bottom. 
Shred is going to rotate down over here as well. Kale still continuing to push his top lane. There's the Blitzcrank pull on the Yuzuki. Yuzuki is going to have to burn the flash to get away. Lemonation taking a lot of damage. Gets taunted over the wall. Exhaust goes off onto his smithy. He's really slow between all those slows on the team. And then Yuzuki will pick up the kill with his ultimate. So a kill going there again. Flash and a knock up there from Blitzcrank on the vein. There goes the pull, but a flash is a little bit too, too much to, uh, for the pull range there. And he's going to be able to get away from that one. So... Very, very nice. Uh, try to come back into that from MTWNA. A very nice kill snipe there from Darius onto Shen. Trades a one for one. Kale in the meantime being chased off of the top lane push from Swain. And now Orbit Gaming still just comfortable in their lead right now, Sala. Orb just stretching out this lead, now up to 6,000 gold, so they're doing exactly what they need to do. While all that was going on, not only did they get the towers, they stole the blue buff away from MTW as well. Cassiopeia much less scary without that blue, so it did go over to Vayne. Some nice flashes by Orb as well. Uh, MTW was, they had some great Blitzcrank grabs there from Daydreaming, but every time it looked like he was about to land a grab, either uh, Darius flashed out right after he got grabbed, and then Vayne was going to get grabbed, and she flashed away before she could get hit by it, so some really nice fast reaction time right there. And again, with having these towers down, those towers just adding a lot of global gold to uh, Orbit and uh, really giving them, they're, they're just building this lead right now with uh, with all the global gold that keeps coming into their side. It's not even so much the kills, I think. Although, I mean, sure, it's nice to have 12 kills, but they've just, uh, they've got both dragons, they've got three towers, and those advantages really stack up. The other thing that I noticed as well is, you know, you, the reason why you pick Shen, you don't pick Shen because he's a good jungler. You pick him because his ult allows him to jump in and save people. Has Shen saved anyone in this game with his ult yet? I I'm not nope. sure that we've seen it, Tom, because every time he comes in, he the shield goes on, but the person he's ulting just dies anyway. Uh, and if Shen's not saving people, then uh, he's just a weak jungler who doesn't clear the jungle very fast. And that's really what we've been seeing thus far. So, so far, I'd have to say the Shen pick just has not really worked out for MTW, and it seemed like they were much more effective. It's like whoever has Nocturne wins, right? I mean, that's basically what it seems like right here. Once again, Pain's going down on mid lane. There's a Nocturne waiting in the wings here. Kale now in the mid lane as well. But this is a four versus two. Darius, is he going to get the upper head? No, he decides to turn around. Four versus four now as the rest of the bottom lane shows up for MTWNA. So still, though, five people here from Orb in the mid lane. They're threatening potentially the objective here. Shen is starting to do a little bit of what he needs to do with that split pushing. But like you said, if he ultimates in and the target dies, he's not going to pop in the team fight. He's not going to save them. No taunts are going to go off. And it's pretty much an ineffective jungle. So Nocturne looking to be the good jungler of this series. Blitzcrank barely missing a pull on him as we're talking about him right there. But still, Nocturne really starting to be the MVP because of the map control he offers. Both Shen and Alistair. Alistair can be very aggressive like he was last game. Just wasn't warding nearly as much as he could be. And now Shen this game, having to buy an Oracle's Elixir, he's only warding really once he kills wards. We're now at the, like the 21, 22 minute mark of the game. And Shen is now like placing wards around the map, has an Oracle's Elixir and just doing that, which was what the advantage was entirely for Orbit in the first 20 minutes of the game. Well, Shen did lose his first Oracle when he died the last time, unfortunately for him, so he did have to rebuy that, and of mm -hmm. course that's slowing down, that. that's making that advantage even worse off. I would expect, it looks like Dragon's about to uh, pop in another minute or so, but I would expect uh, Orbit to force a Baron fight relatively soon, because if they can get the Oracle, if they can clear out the wards, they can just force MTW to come fight them at Baron. It's a little bit risky, but I mean, they've got all the outer towers. They're just going to get uh, Shen split pushed to death if they don't, you know, force fights at global objectives. And uh, they're so much stronger right now. I, I feel like if they just force a fight, I mean, they're going to Dragon right now. It's about to respawn. They're going to pick that one up. But I feel like they can just really put pressure on to Baron. Uh, they've got the Oracle on Nunu, and I expect to see them do that as a way of countering that Shen split push, which we're finally seeing him start to do. And Dragon, wow, dropping in about four seconds there, going down really fast. So you can see that if they do that, the Baron will go down in probably about 12 seconds or so. So they, they don't need to, uh, you know, if they can clear out the wards and make sure that there's no vision there, they really can put a lot of pressure on MTW to come fight them over here by the Baron pit, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And if, I don't know about you, but Orbit Gaming might be a little skeptical with how many Orai Baron attempts are in game number one, but once again, they have such a great strong positioning, such a great strong lead. Ooh, Darius barely missing the apprehend over the wall on the Shen right there. They have Silver Bolts on Vayne, which is ridiculously good to take down Baron. They have Nocturne with a Wriggles Lantern, also extremely good. And he's going to be able to play Blood Boiled, one or the other of them, by Nunu. Nunu actually, in the meantime, get pulled over the wall. That's an initiation from Nocturne on there, though. Darius did this as well. Shen flashes out of the way, leaving Blitzcrank and Kale to die. Kale pops the ultimate, Nunu off the ultimate. Kale actually going to flash over the wall and live for the time being, but she's getting extremely low. Nocturne will pick up the kill there. We are to stay, uh, meanwhile, following the rest.
rest of them. Apprehend goes down on both Cassiopeia and Corky. Darius stealing the deal with an ultimate kill on the Cassiopeia right there. That is a three for none. And even though MTWNA thought they had the good engagement right there, well, Nocturne turned that one around. They pulled Nunu, thought they had the one person they wanted. Unfortunately, Nocturne dove in, Darius ran in as well, and they wound up pulling three people technically, and that was not the way they wanted to have that go. Nunu getting very, very low, have to pop the summoner heal on Baron, but it looks like they're still gonna take this Baron. MTWNA can only but watch through well, Fog of War on that one. As 15 kills to 4, Orbit Gaming now has the commanding lead here. About 10,000 gold, Sola. That was that was the pull that backfired there for sure. They pulled Nunu right into the middle of their team, which looked great, as you said, right until uh, Nocturne ulted, and all of a sudden no one could see anything, and everyone from Orb was just racing into the middle of MTW. And there's a surrender. Game's over. GG. Wow. That's a bit Ooh. of a fast surrender, but means we got a fast game, and we're going to game three here, aren't we, Tom? Yes, we are. The game was not as quite back and forth as game number one was, but exciting nonetheless. Orbit Gaming, we, did, we saw this happen a little bit earlier in the tournament as well. Troopers Troopers a relatively unknown team took game number one off orbit gaming surprisingly fast i think it was like a 20 minute game and they took them down without a surrender vote it was just a finished 